Uh, Ms. Cook, I have a couple of very big picture principles and uh, concepts to go over with you. If you could answer a few questions for me. Can you walk us through the relationship between the grid reliability and the energy transition? Um, well, I would say currently it's not really a transition. I'm worried we're actually going over a cliff. Um, if we if we switch to predominantly undispatchable, non-dispatchable, unreliant or unreliable resources and put them on a grid providing, this is going to sound kind of geeky and, um, but poor quality, um, too much, too much power at one time, not enough at another. The grid has to have balance. It has to be, um, electricity has to be used immediately and it has to always be in balance. When you have sources like wind and solar, and I'm not saying there's not a place for them. I'm just saying when you have sources like wind and solar that aren't reliable in the sense of they're either spiky or they have times of the day when they when they aren't working, um, it, it, it makes the grid more fragile. It is less resilient. It is unstable. Um, and you will see things like um, blackouts, uh, brownouts, or in, in some cases, a, a complete failure. Um, I, baseload power is baseload for a reason. And when you look at capacity factors, we need to be investing in things that can provide stable, reliable, clean, abundant, affordable power when we need it. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Cook. And I will tell you that um, I experienced the uh, blackouts in February of 2020 at a time when the weather conditions in Montana were about uh, 20 below zero. And the folks in Texas were experiencing the, the same types of issues. And we, and we witnessed the near collapse of the entire power grid, which brings me to my next question. Do you agree the grid reliability and energy security are valid public policy concerns? Absolutely, 100%, some of the single most important public policy concerns. Thank you very much. And would you uh, respond to accusations that discussing grid reliability, energy security, and climate goals together constitute greenwashing or, or disinformation? Um, listen, I don't think any time you hear another voice, whether, you know, even if you disagree with it, it's not disinformation. It is It is simply somebody in the public arena having a debate. I get it. You don't like those people. I get it. But that doesn't mean we don't have valid concerns. And I'll tell you what, um, if you want to, if you want to see devastating consequences for the environment, see a grid collapse. See what that looks like when people are then burning whatever they can get their hands on to heat their homes or to to cook food. Uh, these are it's not disinformation just because you don't agree with it. It is another perspective that deserves to be heard and frankly must be heard. And by the way, that's how we come to the best solutions. I trust Americans. I trust voters, I trust legislators to look at all sides and do the right thing. Public policy organizations like mine, all we do is provide you the information. What you do with it is up to you, but we provide you the information so you can make sound public policy decisions. And that means hearing my perspective on energy um, security, and grid stability. Thank you, and, and uh, Ms. Cook, you know, it's been demonstrated factually that the world's going to need oil and gas um, products for decades to come, not only for energy, but because of all the byproducts that are also generated by each and every one of these. Could you describe the benefits of having oil and gas produced here in the United States with our high the highest environmental standards and labor standards rather than imported countries like Russia, Iran, and, and Venezuela? Yeah, that's um, where I lived in Colorado, Weld County, Colorado, which was one of the highest oil and gas producing counties in the country. Um, 
you know, 25,000 wells, and I might be wrong on that, but 95% of them are hydraulically fractured, improving air quality every single day because of these strict environmental standards that not just the United States, but the state of Colorado put on oil and gas producers. Hydraulic fracturing alone, the ability to to horizontally and then to vertically and then horizontally and directionally drill was absolutely revolutionary in efficiency and emissions reduction. Thank you. And uh, Madam Chair, I see that I, my time has expired. So, Ms. Cook, thank you so much for your uh, participation. I yield back.